I know a lot of you out there struggle with having a broken relationship with one or both of your parents. And that's why today I brought over a very special guest to discuss how she deals with that healing process. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. If you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and typically what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. But this week, while I'm out of town, I've brought over a bunch of guests to do guest videos and share their experience. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So today I have the wonderful Jazz Brown here to share her story and it really connects with me. So she's gonna talk to you a little bit about her experience and the relationship with her mother, which led to a lot of issues with self-love, depression, weight gain, and all sorts of things. And I can definitely relate to this as the son of an alcoholic mom. So when I listened to Jazz share her story, it really resonated with me. So I was like, you need to come share this video um, over on my channel with my audience, because I know a lot of you can relate as well. So without further ado, here is the wonderful Jazz Brown. Greetings and salutations, rewired soldiers. My name is Jazz, and I want to thank Chris so much for this collab. I think what he's doing is extremely important. I think that he is helping breaking down the stigma and mental illness and getting help. And today, I want to share kind of my life story with you guys and share how I got to where I am and how I'm happier and yeah, let's just get into it. So again, my name is Jazz, Jasmine Brown. I was born on November 13th, 91. I was born to a 16 year old mother who had another child before me, so just that in itself, you can imagine, could be difficult. Anyway, when I was a baby, now this part of the story is a little, uh, a little confusing because I don't know all the details. Sometimes people tell me this, sometimes people tell me that. So I'm just gonna tell you kind of best what happened. According to my family, I was born to my mother, and three days later, I became sick, and I wasn't drinking my milk, I was having a hard time breathing, and my grandmother took me to the hospital. The hospital found out I had all these medical issues. First they found out I, had, I needed a breathing tube, which is this, which is a trach, which is basically a third airway. They also found out that I had dwarfism and a few other orthopedic problems and that I could not go back home. They needed to get me well. Once they got me well and stabilized, my biological mother was nowhere to be found. My grandma kept coming to the hospital, but because of her own sickness and health issues, she couldn't take care of me. And every time they would reach out to my mom, she wasn't anywhere to be found. Anyway, if you can believe it, the first two years of my life were spent in a hospital because they did not have a group home for children with medical issues. So in 93, the first medical group home for children was to be opened. And I was gonna be the first resident because by this point, the hospital had no choice but to put me in foster care because of my mom not being anywhere around. When, as I was about to be the first resident at this group home, one of the respiratory therapists who had been taking care of me in the hospital decided that she would become a foster parent so that I wouldn't have to be in a group home. In her words, I had too much potential and being in a group home was not 
the answer. So she and her husband and their kids, because by this point, they had three grown kids that were in their late teens and early 20s. Everybody got trained with my disability, had to handle my breathing tube and my, all of that, and they brought me into their home. And the cool thing is, they never treated me like I was any different. Even though I was still a foster child, they loved me, they cared for me, like I was their kid. But then around age five, my biological mom came back into the picture. She said she wanted me. She said she wanted to start fighting for me. And the courts had no option but to listen to her, so the court ordered visitation rights. I never lived with her, but she would come to my foster parents' house and she would learn how to care for me and things like that. So when the time came for me to live with her, she would know how to do everything. But here's the problem. Here's where things started going kind of crazy. She never showed up. She would call. She would get my hopes up. She told me she'd come. She said she would love me. And she never came. Week after week, she would never come. She was supposed to come, I think, two or three times Oh, uh, out of the month, every weekend on a Saturday to learn how to take care of me. And maybe once a month, she would actually show up. And that is when, even though I didn't know it at the time, that is when the depression and self-loathing started. Because I remember thinking, well, damn, if my own mother doesn't want me, why would anyone else want me? But again, I was only five, and I didn't know what these emotions were, but I knew that I would get really sad, and I was just heartbroken, and I just didn't understand. Even though I had a loving foster family, I still wanted her to love me, and I couldn't understand why she didn't. I couldn't understand why she would tell me she was going to come, knowing full well that she had no intentions of coming. So I guess, let's say about five or six, uh, she had met her requirements. I don't know how. And I was able to start going to her house twice a month for a few hours so she could take care of me and do all the necessary things for my help. And I would go with someone so they could observe how she was caring for me. And here's where the next problem came in. When I would go to her house, she wasn't there either. Either she would come maybe a half an hour before it was time for me to leave, or she would be there and then leave maybe a half an hour into it. Now mind you, I went to her house twice a month on a Saturday for four hours. Eight hours a month was a struggle for her to want to spend time with me and learn how to take care of me with my disabilities and everything. The self-loathing and depression became deeper and deeper. And because I still wanted to live with my mom, because I still didn't understand this rejection, from the time I was five years old until age 11, I would go to these visits twice a month, and maybe out of that five-year span, maybe she showed up maybe 10 times. And every time I would come home from a visit, my mom said I would act out, I would get angry, and it was just because I was depressed. I felt rejected. I had no other way to express how I was feeling. Now, during this time, my first foster family was going to move away. They were going to move to Ohio, and they were going to adopt me and take me with them. But what wound up happening is my biological mother blocked it so that I would stay in Philadelphia. She told the courts that she still wanted me, and they had no choice but to place me in another foster home, which was extremely devastating to me, because these people were all I knew. And now you're telling me at age 
seven, I had to go someplace else. Now, the good news is, when I was in my first foster home, there was a nurse who would take care of me, and she decided to take me in. So it's not like it was so bad that I didn't know anybody. But still, the heartbreak and the separation was really tough on me, and... Again, I started acting out. I couldn't express myself. I didn't know what was going on. There was just a lot of pain and rejection, and I did not handle it well. Um, once I went to my new foster home, luckily she did adopt me. It took some time because there were some issues, but she was able to adopt me. She fought for me. She had to tell my mother off, my biological mother off a few times because she found out how much she wasn't doing for me and that wasn't gonna fly with her. But the point is, there was a lot of pain and rejection and separation and I did not know how to handle it. My adopted mom put me in therapy because she felt as though if you're a foster child, you need to be in therapy just to talk to some to someone. But I never talked to anybody. I had so much pain and anger inside, I didn't want to deal with it. And on top of just not liking myself, I didn't like that I was disabled because I felt as though being disabled is why my mom didn't want me. She even told me one day that she might have wanted me more if I wasn't disabled. So for many years, I uh, uh, buried those emotions way down deep, and I just didn't think about it, didn't talk about it, stopped going to therapy, the whole shebang. Anyway, when I entered college and I had to start fending for myself, it's almost like all those emotions and everything, all those things that I had suppressed for all those years just started coming out. And when they came out, it started a five-year span of self-destruction, depression, and just... I ruined my life for five years. It started with just crying, then I didn't want to go anywhere, and then within a year or two, it evolved into me gaining a whole lot of weight. Uh, I wouldn't shower for months, and it was just, I was at the lowest point that I could be. Um, I wasn't paying rent. I almost got evicted from my apartment. There were just all of these issues and which stemmed from me not dealing with all the issues at hand. Even though I didn't know it, I hated myself. I didn't want anything good for myself. All I wanted to do was just be sad and be depressed. And I felt like no one loved me or cared about me, which wasn't true. But I always had that voice in the back of you, my mind saying, if your own mother didn't want you, why should anybody else? Five years into my depression that my adoptive mom basically told me I was coming home. Because once I moved out and went to college, I kind of stopped talking to her. I stopped talking to all my friends. I isolated myself from other people. I just stayed inside. I wasn't going to class. It got so bad that my roommates had to call the landlord because everyone could smell me and my room from upstairs because of how deep in this depression I was. Anyway, my mom found out. She was pissed. She picked me up. She scooped me up, got my clothes, and we went back home. And that is when she started working with me, started working on me. And she basically said, I don't know what happened, but this shit cannot happen anymore. You can't, you have so much going for you. You have so much potential. You're just screwing your life up. So with the help of my mom, I was able to drop the weight. I still have 50 pounds to go, but I've lost uh, 50 in the past year. Uh, my hygiene is better. I'm a lot happier and I'm a lot brighter. And most important, I go to therapy now and I do not try to 
skirt over the issues. I want to deal with them head on. I want to deal with the pain. And that is mainly what I want to say to you guys. If you do not acknowledge the pain, or if you do not address the trauma that you've been through, it will come out. You may not know when it's going to come out, but it will, and it will destroy you because you have not dealt with these issues. If it weren't for my mom and my faith in God, I'd still be in that same depressed state. So anybody out there, if you are going through something, please talk to somebody. Work through it, no matter how painful it may be, because it is painful. There are still days now where I cry about things that I thought I got over years ago, but it's there, and you have to deal with it. One of the things I'm learning now is that I am beautiful. I am loved. People do like me. No one really looks at my disability. No one really looks at the fact that I'm in a chair. It's about what comes out of my heart and soul. That's what people are looking for, and that's what people are looking at. And forgive. Most importantly, forgive the people that hurt you, because if you, it's not for them, it's for you. That's the only way you're going to get through it. Forgiveness is key. I forgave my mother for what she's done. I've actually reached out to her and asked if we can discuss things. She said she doesn't want to do it because it's too painful for her. Now, everyone in my life knows that's a bunch of B BS, but it is what it is. I have forgiven her, and I pray that she can forgive herself. And with that being said, I'm going to end my portion of the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please continue to watch The Rewired Soul. Please continue to want to, to get help and be on the road to recovery. Um, yes, just be your best selves and get the help that you need if it's presented to you. Thank you guys for listening. And again, thank you, Chris, for having me. Bye. Dang, that was some inspirational stuff right there. Like, I I love that, I love that. Like, Jazz's mom coming up in there, rolling up in there and saying, yo, yo, like laying down the tough love and says, we're gonna do something about this. And now Jazz is killing it. She's back in therapy, taking care of her weight. Like, this is why I love listening to other people's stories. They give me so much hope and inspiration. You know what I mean? Like, we don't have to let our past bring us down. And what I absolutely loved that Jazz said is like, we have to forgive people. We have to forgive people. Like, I talk about this all the time. It's like, we get this in our head, like, and this is part of our pride and ego, that forgiveness is letting the other person off the hook. I don't look at it that way in the more. Like forgiveness is letting myself off the hook. I have to forgive people who hurt me because if not, I will sit, I will stew on it and it will destroy me. So like, it doesn't affect the other person, but it affects me. That's why I have to let go. And the thing is too, like, I often compare my experience to others and it's part of human nature, but I'm very mindful of it. Like, was my experience better or worse than this person? Better or worse, better than worse, right? And like, Jazz's relationship with her mother and growing up in the foster system, like that's something I never dealt with. And it always makes me remember of one speaker I heard years ago, right? And this, this guy went through so many things that I had never gone through like we're talking about multiple situations with abuse uh he was kidnapped we're talking physical as well as sexual abuse all these other things and it led him to an addiction to meth and alcohol and then one day his his sponsor which is like a mentor said straight up to him like you guys want to know where my tough love comes from like listen to this his sponsor says to him he says hey I'm sorry for everything that's happened to you in your life, but it's no longer an excuse to live the way that you're living. And I was like, damn, right? Because how many of us use our past as an excuse 
to not live the best life that we can live, right? And in turn, it affects the relationships around us. Like for me, I was using my past and my relationship with my mom for me to be a bad father, for me to be a bad friend, to be for me to be a bad son, you know, all sorts of different things, to be a bad employee. But when I heard that and realizing that, you know, it sucks that I had my past, but it's not an excuse to destroy myself or the lives of others, it helped me get my butt in gear and start working on myself. So like when I hear somebody like Jazz, who's been through like, you know, this rough relationship with her mom and, you know, dealing with what she uh, went through, like it inspires me on a, on a regular basis when I hear stories like this. So I really appreciate Jazz coming over to share her story. Her The link to her channel, like please go check it out and subscribe. It is gonna be linked up in the info card down in the description as well as in the pinned comment all over the place, all right? But let me know down in the comments below, share your experience. Share your experience, whether you struggle with like forgiveness or how you forgave somebody and it helped you move forward or how you needed some tough love like Jazz got from her mom to kick your butt into gear and go out there and get into the solution. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to go check out Jazz's channel, which you need to and go subscribe, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again, Jazz, for doing this guest video, and I'll see you all next time.